All right, good morning. Good morning. February 2nd. Woo! One month of the year is done. One twelfth of the year is done. It's behind us. So excited to have you today. Today, we got a rock star interview on success. You know, Gary Keller says you can get anywhere. We can get anywhere we want in this business in five years. And we got a little success story we're going to tell you about. And they're going to tell you it wasn't always easy. And they're a little crazy. So great. Let's get started off with something good. Who has something smart or exciting to tell us? Ken. Today is my anniversary, 31 years. 31 years. What's your, what's your one piece of advice for being married for 31 years? Always say yes to whatever she says. Always say yes. <laughs> wow. Interesting. Okay, great. 31. Anybody beat that in marriage? I've married more than 31 years. CW, Barbara, good. How much? Cool. Okay, great. I beat, yeah. I beat that. 39, what do you got? 39 years. How many? 39, 39 years. Yes, sir. Was, Valentine's Day is 35 for us. 35. Okay, Valentine's Day. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, go ahead. I've been doing my equity analysis and I- Do you guys with us today? Okay, go ahead. I've been doing my equity analysis as encouraged and yeah. I got two listing appointments this week. All right, good job. <laughs> Listings are gold, listings are gold. You guys know that, right? Yes. Okay, great, yes. Today's my father's birthday. He's celebrating in heaven. Okay, all right, remembering your dad today. Great, LaDonna. of reinventing myself. And I am so happy that working with Greg St. Ford, I'll be rolling out my new uh, website. All right, cool. Carrying a little presence online. Cool, good stuff. Dan Goon. I was gonna say, uh, Tanya is, uh... Tanya is very consistent in uh, attending the early bird, yep. which is 5.30 in the morning, guys. And Serena and them, I see them because I, I pop on every now and then. <laughs> uh, but uh, constantly consistent on the James Shaw show, and she's constantly consistent on the script in yep. the office. Yep. And uh, as they say on uh, James Shaw, she put in the, she gets the inspiration, and uh, now she does the perspiration and, and the, getting results. So that's, that's awesome. great. Congratulations. Great. Tom. Good work. All right. Who else? Some exciting, some smart to say. Yes. Yeah, happy birthday. Woo -woo. 25, right? Okay, cool. Okay. All right, anybody else? Something smart, some exciting to share? That's it? Okay, great. Let's move along and get this going. Oh, don't forget. For the 100 people or so that are in our market center that haven't paid your HR, HAR dues, take care of that, please. Les Norman, you want to hear from Norman. You haven't, don't make Norman mad. Have you seen his mad side? I'm kidding about Norman, he's mad side. Okay, don't forget also, we have our award celebration that's coming up this year. We'll be at the George Ranch. Okay, a link has been set out to the top producers. Why? Because they're the ones getting some of the trophies and some of the things. Please, if you've gotten the link, join us for that day and lock in. Once we get to Friday, we're going to open it up to everyone. It'll be a fun event. Uh, Roger Adamson, who's the foundation, George Foundation chairperson, is going to speak at this event as well. And he's just going to share some things that are going to go on with the George Foundation. You do know the major development in our lifetime is going to be that, that foundation. And there's actually a development that's coming on the other side of that as well. And we'll touch base on that. So it'll kind of tell you about the George Ranch, which is right here. Tell you about the foundation and the future outlook. And then we'll have a lot of fun. We promise to be fast and furious with awards. We always need walkers and we always need clappers. Do you know the difference? So, and if you're a clapper today, let's make sure next year you're a walker. Okay. That was a joke. I thought that was pretty good. Walkers. Are you a walker or a clapper? Which one? 
Okay, so look for that link. And if you're not, join us and the link will come out, uh, but make sure you are RSVP. All right, Greg, come on up. I mean, LaDonna already gave you an endorsement, so. Wow. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Greg. I handle the marketing for the office. So I have a quick question for you guys. How many of you use video for your marketing? Raise your hand. Okay. Oh, oh man. It's like a little, maybe a little bit more, about half the room. So, you know, I just want to you know, give a, one. Well, I'm going to give you some quick notes and encouragement. Video is a big deal for marketing yourself as a business owner, definitely as a real estate agent, right? So when you're, when you're creating a brand, remember there's 45,000 real estate agents in the Houston metro area. No one cares that you have a license, right? They want to have a relationship with you. So leveraging video is a way for you to build a relationship with someone and is a scalable piece of content for nurturing. So you can reuse it. You can send it in your social media. You can text it. You can put it in your email list. If you go to the classes, you learn how to put it in your smart plan using command. So when you create a piece of video, you can use it multiple times. I definitely recommend that you guys use it. At our office, we create a lot of videos. You may have seen them on social media and we use those videos to market the office and it highlights some of our top producers. So I'm gonna show you one of the videos that you may have seen before, maybe not. I wanna make sure you guys see a great example of video that we use on the office level. Can you go for it? Hi, I'm Pinky Pirani of Keller Williams Southwest. I love Fort Bend County. I have never been to or lived in a more welcoming and diverse community that has so many different cultures. I moved here for the excellent schools and the many amenities available for families. The parks continue to grow and the wonderful places to spend a day with family, friends and pets. Since moving to Houston from Mumbai, I always loved helping other families to find a place to live. A few knew us from back home and I was their first call when they moved to the Houston area. Others knew me through my social work in the community. So it was an easy transition in becoming a licensed realtor. Once I decided to become a realtor, I also decided I want to be the best. Keller Williams Southwest provided the training and support needed to grow a top-notch team. They were understanding, welcoming, and told me that the sky is the limit. They continue to give so much support and encouragement to my brother Imran and I. Imran and I are carrying on a tradition of our family. My parents are amazing realtors and have sold over 5,000 homes. We want to continue our parents' legacy here in Fort Bend and beyond. We have achieved over $150 million in sales and won tons of awards because our clients see how sincerely we work and our professionalism through every step. We don't work for money. We work for the best interest of our client. When our clients are satisfied, that is the reward. Their emotions and the happiness and the satisfaction always comes first. I'm Pinky Pirani of Keller Williams Southwest, and I have what it takes to push real estate forward. All right. That was, that was like a really, oh, okay, all right, well, that's fine. So that was a really great video we did with Pinky. We have a budget where we support a lot of our ALC and top producers and creating video content. We partner up with them to create videos and promote the office, promote, promote our agents. So really great piece of content. So what are the things you may have noticed? What is something, give me one thing you noticed about that video. Someone share, share with me. You guys clap, so there's something that you noticed. What the, one thing that you noticed about that video? Solid foundation, what else? Exactly, right? So what we did was we had someone and talked to uh, Pinky. We talked about her story, where she's from, what, Fort Bend County, because I'm assuming everyone here is farming Fort, Fort Bend County, right? Um, what, what, what is her business? Why should you work with her, right? It's her story, right? That's what people want to work with. She didn't mention, hey, I'm a real estate agent. That's not why someone works with Pinky. They work about everything about her professionalism and her story. How can you build a relationship with them? And of course, in our office, we leverage those videos because we want to have a relationship with you, share our culture, right? That's what we do on the office level. So I definitely want to encourage all of you to use video to market yourself. Now, not every single time you need to have a, a whole video crew, you can actually do it with your phone. Most videos online are on, on your phone, right? So this is this is what we do as a brokerage level, but you have a phone. Everyone has a, it can be your own video crew, 
right? So just some quick numbers. Three out of, of, of four Facebook users visit a local business page on Facebook. So how many of you have a business page on Facebook? All right, so three out of four. So most people who are on Facebook actually look for business pages to connect with. So you wanna make sure you're there. And then when you're there, when you're on Facebook, you wanna have video content there. Why? Because according to Forbes, 90% of his, uh, customers say video helped them make their buying decision. So in this case, you're selling yourself, right? So they wanna be able to, hey, why would I work with you? And that video, video is 90% of the influence of that, all right? Um, last, create videos using your phone. And of course, run Facebook ads. So you can run ads through command. You can run ads directly through Facebook. You don't, ne you don't necessarily have to put $1,000 to have an ad that's gonna be effective, right? What you wanna do is have an ad and be consistent with it. So I know some people I've had conversations with, you run an ad, you spend $20 and you expect to get 20 leads from it. That's just not how it works, guys. You wanna have ads and you run it on a regular basis. The way Facebook works is the more you do on Facebook, the better the data is, the better the data, the better the results. So you wanna post consistently and run ads consistently. And that's what leads to having leads come in. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah. So of course, you wanna meet with me and talk more, you can email me, gregorys at kw.com or use this link, agentmarketingdesk.com slash me. And we could talk about any campaigns, videos, tips, and so on. Sounds good, everyone? Awesome. All right, thank you, Greg. All right, so I want you to point out there, when we do videos, right, we do showcase our top people in the office. You go, hey, I want to be in a video that the office covered. We'll get in the top. It's a production. That's all I can tell you, right? There's, there's no politics on it. Either get on the ALC or get in that top group because we will showcase those pieces. But more importantly, watch, right? It's a way for you to watch and you can go do it yourself. Sometimes you can do it right here. And other times you go to Greg and go, will that video company partner with me and go do it? Absolutely. He'll give you a breakdown of the cost and he'll actually set that up that you can do it on your own. So these are just clues for you to follow. Success leaves clues. Just copy them, by the way. All right. And if you don't think we have success, we'll share some numbers with you with Pinky and Imran, right? There are showcases of how they're doing. It made just a couple dollars last year. Okay, Nikki, come on. Thank you. Chad was really nice and waited for me. I had a little scare. But I want to piggyback about what uh, Greg was saying. Greg was saying being consistent with your ads. And as we always say, you need to be consistent with your real estate lead generation too, right? Not only with the ads, but with everything you do. We strongly believe that the long-term success lays in doing the little thing, boring things consistently. And this month is the month of love, right? So I know Namash last week kind of um, gave you a little hint on what's going to happen in February. A lot of the PC agents know what's happening. We have a loving on listing contest against two other Keller Williams offices, Keller Williams Signatures and Keller Williams Freedom. So um, this is a great time to get listings. And we implemented different ways uh, in how to keep you guys accountable. It's an accountability contest, meaning that we divided the agents that decided to participate in lead generation models. Do you do door knocking? Do you do open houses, cold calling, sphere calling, marketing, anything that you do, we try to group it and put you guys with th people that think alike you. So you can learn better and do better. We have already agents sign up, but this is a great tool for you to be accountable. We are here to keep you accountable and make sure that you lay a good path for your 2022 and be successful at it. Um, it is not only open to PC agents, it's open to any agent that's seeking accountability and consistency. We, uh, we, keep, we have captains that lead the teams that check in with you every day to get numbers. And if they see that you are behind, we are gonna jump in and help you being consistent. If we have to hold your hand and make you do the calls, we will do that. We are here to have you have to have you achieve a great 2022, and it starts now. So, if you want to participate or you want to know more about it, either the ATL know all about it, myself, Chad, everybody on the leadership team knows about the contest. We can tell you how it works and how we can help you with that. So, all right, thank you. Thank you. All right, good job. And we got a win, by the way. Yes. <laughs> Did you have something? Come on, Verna. You were to me like you didn't want to. No, I just jumped through.
Chris is doing transmittal, so she's busy. Yes, LaDonna. Uh, when it comes to company dollars, we're we're top five in the in the whole company, all of KW. Yes. So, yeah, we're doing something right, and our goal is we need to create more cappers. We need to engage more people. We should just be double what we we deliver right now. Yes. Absolutely. So adding Thank into you. that, just like Nikki is preparing you with listings and going after listings, there's other ways to capture listings, which is with buyer seminars. We hosted a buyer seminar like informational on Monday. If you're interested in being part of our, um, I guess, Kellerium Southwest monthly buyer seminars that we're partnering with a lender for, please let me know. Send me an email and I'll shoot you a quick um, information about that stuff if you missed the meeting on this past Monday. So that's another great way is to win with buyer seminars. So let me know. Um, additionally, getting on the bus. It's coming. We're in February. That happens on February 25th. If they haven't already mentioned it, um, just want to reiterate that. Um, if you're interested in getting on that, the link was paid posted on our Facebook closed group, but if you didn't see it or you just need a refresher, send me an email. We can get you on the bus. It's our cocoa and coffee bus tour of Sienna. If you participated in last year, you know how great that was. Tammy and Allison are really good in giving you great information and making you enjoy your experience of learning about Sienna. Okay, okay great. Thank you. Great. Right. Let's go back. That was such a either clap or don't clap. One of the two, yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Give me that much love. Okay, wait. Okay. okay, do it again. Oh. Oh. All right. All right. Maybe, maybe there was a clap. There, it was that clap for me walking up. Right. It was the, uh, the mash. Yeah. All right. So it looks like the theme of today is 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 uh, lead generating and staying consistent. Now remember, you don't have to necessarily stay consistent communication with your clients directly, right? You leverage your systems and models that are that are at your disposal, right? Now, I know we had a, a huge commitment in the DocuSign transition, and so we really focused on that in December and January. We did scale back a little bit of the command and other technology uh, trainings available. Uh, we will start implementing those back in, okay? So just be aware of those, check out the schedule, and start coming in. Again, DocuSign transition is still really important, so those will still be uh, offered for you, okay? Um, another piece of note, I would, last week we did have, uh, I did do some workshops based on the MREA that were in person only during the day and they were pretty powerful and pretty effective. I'm going to do the same ones in the evening in February. Okay. In person only. So if you're available at around 5 30 or 6 PM, look out for them on the calendar. And I highly encourage you to attend. All right. And then I believe, uh, just a reminder, family reunion, uh, around the corner. If you guys are interested, I believe we got to notice that in two days. Uh, there is going to be a slight price increase. So if you're interested in going to Orlando, please uh, seek one of us out and we will definitely get you some more info on how to go about that. I highly encourage everybody to at least attend digitally. So you get all of the uh, education and all of the content that's going to be available to you during that four day span. All right. Good deal. All that's right. It, Great. Thank you. All right. Anything else we missed? Okay, let's jump into our interview. Interview, Imran, Pinky, come on up. Woo. All right, Imran and Pinky set the, I'm gonna need that please, uh, set the all time record for, come on up here and stand and I'm gonna walk away here in a little bit, but I wanna introduce you to them as well because a great success story, they sold a little bit of real estate. A little bit right nice. <laughs> uh number they were number one in gross commission income set an all-time record it was like 2.3 million in gross commission Woo! income right it was all easy too wasn't Amazing. it yeah. <laughs> yeah and then you also sold that was 276 closings 106 million in production Woo! coupled with resell and new sell so you guys are going to speak right there i'm going to okay. move away and sure. i'm going to grab this so the easiest question number one is tell us tell us your tell us your background. Where where are you from? Give us a little recap of before you made it to Houston, Texas. So I'm originally from India. Uh, I finished my graduation in computer science. Uh, I realized that you know coding is not for me. It was very boring, 
and I decided to join my dad into real estate. So I joined my dad and my brother and worked into worked in real estate industry back in India, Mumbai, for almost 10 years before starting my journey here in Houston. What's real estate like in India? Give us a glimpse what a real estate business looks like in a different country. So uh, what I realized moving here is uh, back home, it's not as regulated. Uh, laws are not as easy. Strict. That's a nice way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> So it was different here. Uh, like we have, you know, promulgated forms and things are pretty much standard when we talk about residential real estate. Back home, it's not like that. You don't have to, you know, be a licensed agent. There's no definition of agent versus broker and things like that. Yeah. So anybody can call himself or herself as broker. So it was different here. And what's what's commission like in India? Give us a, what does that look like? Uh, it's uh Typically standard 2%, but uh, the, the way it's different here, uh, when we are representing a buyer, we expect a uh, commission coming from the seller side. It can be a builder or a, or, you know, a person who is you know, selling his or uh, her home. In India, if you are representing a buyer, the buyer pays you 2%. Yeah. And of course, that's negotiable. Yeah. Very negotiable. That's why that shows up in our world, by the yes. way. Okay, Pinky, you give us your recap. So I'm the eldest sibling. Imran is two years uh, younger to me. Did you hear I, that? She's the older sister. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, my parents, uh, but being uh, born and raised in a very conservative India, uh, my parents were very open, especially my dad. He never discriminated between having a girl child or a, but 41 years ago, it was different. When you have a girl child, the perspective, the, the society and parents is different. So I, uh, they never compromised of, on my education and being uh, having a real estate background. I always helped my parents. Being an oldest child, they had uh, expectations set from me. They were always like, you know, not um, pampered, but I had a lot of things, you know, being, being an older child, going to school and going to college uh, because, you know, my parents are not that educated. They were very wise, very smart, but at the end, uh, you know, not so good with uh, education, writing and all that stuff. So I have two bachelor's, bachelor's degree, bachelor's in commerce and, um, and law. I have a high court license from Bombay. I got married at 24, uh, tw when I was 24, I really wanted to uh, you know, do something, but um, my parents felt that's the time I should get married. So after marriage, um, I moved to Houston. First, I was in Africa. I uh, After moving to Houston, I, I was raising my kids and I was very active in my uh, community, helping immigrant families, doing a lot of social work. I always wanted to do real estate, but it wasn't the right time because I had to focus more on my boys and um, raising a family. And at, there was a time when Im Im Imdan was thinking about moving to United States and Imdan has a very good Good experience of 12 years of uh, doing real estate in India. So I always felt like once he moved uh, here, I being a very social person, very active, and he being so smart in real estate, we will have a great combination uh, having a success together. So that's how we started. So go, go, <laughs> go back to that first year. And, and, and Pinky, you were in, you got licensed before, Imran, how much? It was eight, a, eight months. And I did a mistake by starting my uh, career with a small boutique brokerage. And I, I pointed out that mistake, <laughs> by the way. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I said actually, it was a bad move. Let me jump in. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think in 2016, Chad, were you a team lead or... I, I don't remember I came to Keller Williams, but anyways, like sometimes you think like, um, you know, it, it's, it's all, all brokerages are same and it was a myth. So I was very serious about uh, this business. Uh, even with small brokerage, I printed my 10,000 business cards. I was going in the blazer. I trashed all my jeans. I said, I'm very serious. I'm going to dress up and show up in the office. But there was nobody in the office at that brokerage. So <laughs> I, I learned my hard lesson and then Imran started studying. So it was like eight months later, Imran, Imran joined and then we started as a team. Okay. So brother sister combination. Why work together? Why not you both do it individually and help each other? Why together? So we were very clear that you know when we start real estate, we want to be a team and not an individual agent. So that way we can provide better service to our clients. And then I was I, and I felt that you know you need to have a right business partner, not just because Pinky is my sibling, is because we are partners. She is, uh, she understands business. She understands uh, clients' requirements. 
uh, working in their best interest. And I think, you know, we make a good team together. And I, I think that was the reason why, you know, we came together and started with you know, Keller Williams. And my parents worked together. My, my mom's parents were also selling real estate. My mom's all three brothers were also selling real estate. Imran and my younger brothers were business partners. So we learned from the family that having a bonding and working together with the family is also uh, bringing good results. Yeah. All right. So tell us about that first year. What did it look like? So first year, the way it started, uh, it was end of 20, 2017, I believe. Uh, Pinky and I, we sat together and we were discussing plans of how we're going to start real estate. Um, and then the first thing that comes in your mind is joining a brokerage, right? And we narrowed down to two companies. I won't mention the other <laughs> brokerage name. We won, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, it was very clear uh, and Pinky and I, we were on the same page There's that there's no other company in America that has great culture and great training and that's Keller Williams. So it was an easy pick and it was a common sense. And that's how we move forward. I mean, it was a one day decision and I'm glad that, you know, we made that move. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What would you add to the first, okay, you made a decision, you're jumping into the first year and you just had great success right out of the gates. No, not great success. <laughs> no, it wasn't. No. So when I started being a very active person in um, in our community, and I when I started, I told people, I posted on Facebook, I had an amazing response, a lot of encouraging words. And I thought I'm going to be a rock star agent in just, I'm going to start uh, closing five homes, 10 homes right from first month. But it didn't happen like that when it comes to buying and selling people, they still need someone with the experience, a strong background. So, uh, you know, we all start this business and we have a different perspective. But when we are doing actually the business, the things are different. But being consistent, being serious about your work. And uh, so uh, Imran started eight months ago. So I had my old eight month journey alone. But I was um, I was there showing homes. Sometimes people, they just want to see homes. They are not so serious about working. And it, it had been a lot of disappointments with few people, some of my close friends. But I always take things uh, positively. There, there was one of my friend uh, who, who saw 16 homes with me, new territory, and she didn't buy from me. I was a new agent. So I was like positive, like next time when I'm walking into the new territory, I know everything about this community. So I'm basically always positive person. But um, so, you know, it, it, it was struggling. Um, I, I focused on leases. I took all the leases very seriously. First year, 10,000 commission was on leases and apartments. Uh, every client was important for me. We closed six homes together first year, which was, um, you know, not that many, but not that bad also. But when we were in the last quarter of first year, we had people calling us, um, you know, wanting to work with us from next year. So we were, we in the last quarter of 2016, the, uh, uh, a good 2017 had already begun. So remember, six deals, right? And that was just four or five years ago? Yes. Yeah, yeah. five years ago. So here, as you sit four here and ago. listen, hear this story on six homes, some people get frustrated and give up, but the dam was about ready to break loose. Yeah. Don't okay. give up. <laughs> and, and Chad, yeah. Another thing I want to add is uh, when we started our journey, uh, Jim Jacobus, he was yeah. our uh, mentor, trainer, amazing person. Uh, we were in Ignite, right? And I think I learned a lot in Ignite and then we joined Bold. And I think you, overall, you know, it helped us, you know, grow professionally. Yeah. So I think any Asian, you know, who's joining our team, we insist them to, you know, join these uh, trainings. It, it really helps. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. So we're on this. So give us a little picture in between is what is your business? Give a glimpse of what your business looks like today. We heard some of the numbers. But what does it look like? Break that down for us, what your business looks like today. So, <laughs> so I can proudly say that uh, our team is one of the biggest teams selling new construction homes in Fort Bend County. Uh, we are number one selling team in a lot of master plan communities, number one selling team uh, for a lot of builders, including 
Newmark Homes, Highland, Perry Homes, Coventry. So we've, we've broken a lot of records in selling new construction homes. Uh, we are also working with a lot of investors recently, helping them invest in residential and commercial real estate. Um, we have uh, formed two separate entities working uh, in helping our investors uh, invest into residential and commercial. Uh, one of our entities also involved in direct uh, commercial development right now. So why new construction? Uh, I realized that uh, it's it's a niche. Again, there are so many things uh, as a realtor you can do in, in real estate. You have residential, you have commercial. In commercial, people do land deals, hotels, motels, and stuff like that. In residential, you can be an amazing listing agent or represent buyers. And when we started, I realized that, you know, maybe let's focus on new construction because we are in suburbs and there, there were communities, you know, uh, that were coming up. And I saw, and Pinky, we both saw that there's great opportunity here. So let's focus on new construction and farm an area and be the local expert of that area instead of going to an area where there's people, you know, already competing in established neighborhoods of Sugarland and, you know, Katy area. And when we focused on new construction, we also made sure that we are doing enough marketing for those communities. So initially when we started, we were not like the top agents, but we were consistent in marketing. We were consistent, consistent in building rapport with the builders and developers and builders. They see how much hard work we were putting into visiting their model homes, getting to know the inventory and all the information. So that's what uh, made us, you know, top agents in that lot of other, th lot of things together made us the top agents in our, in those communities. And also we just, you know, discussed about uh, videos and yeah. Facebook. And I think we hit heavily on, you know, uh, creating different videos for the communities. And I personally feel that a lot of buyers and prospects saw a lot of value in that. And uh, Pinky, you know, created a lot of Facebook pages dedicated just to those communities. So we have a lot of traffic and a lot of engagement coming from those platforms too. All right, break it down for us. I'm an, I'm an agent and I want to establish myself in the new construction. And you're going to maybe give it to me in three steps. What are the most important? I didn't set you up for this question, mm -hmm. but what would be the most, the three most important things to do to establish that new construction presence? Uh, number one is having knowledge and having established relationship with the builders and developers. I think that's the key. If I'm making a video and if somebody's calling me and I don't have any idea of what's going on in the neighborhood, you're not going to get a call back or you're not going to grow in business. So that's step one. Yeah. Step two is market your knowledge. <laughs> step three, Pinky can tell you. Um, stay where your farm area is. If you live in Richmond and you're focusing in Pureland, it's not going to work. So be there. Be a hyper local agent in that community. Not in that community, at least around that community. Yeah. So you guys are passionate about where they are eventually you moved into the neighborhood that you were farming correct yeah, yes. i bought my house yeah. yeah i was living in the old neighborhood in sugarland but when we started selling more homes it was very much required imran was already living there uh, so i bought my house too in that community okay all right talk to us about some challenges you don't have any challenges, do you? <laughs> Pinky came in one time. She goes, I don't want to do this anymore, right? Yeah. Uh, so there's some challenge of faces. I have been Tell controlling us. my tears so many times. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us about some challenges. Tell us about growing as quickly as you have. What are some challenges? How did you overcome it? And then tell us the challenges that work. Be real with them of working with each other. You're very different, which is a strength. At the same time, it can be frustrating. It is. So when you're growing, um, it can be very overwhelming and it can be very challenging, just, just the growth itself, because there are so many things that's going on, right? And then how do you make it more scalable? And that's what, you know, a lot of trainings and I have heard so many times from Chad that, you know, anything that you do, make it scalable, right? And that's how we have been, you know, overcoming our challenges. Uh, not just, you know, hitting high numbers, selling more homes, we are growing as a team as well. So we also want to put enough efforts in growing our team and grow, making sure that our team members, whoever is joining us, they are also growing professionally. And time has time is the biggest challenge because you can only do so much in 24 hours. Yeah. 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 
hiring as you all know i am the one uh, who is hiring and sometimes firing or i think most of the time firing so uh, and then i people yes so when it comes to hiring that agent is very happy with me but when it comes to firing they only like imran so uh, <laughs> it is challenging you know even uh, first me we both are uh, individuals even though we are uh raised in the same family so when we started business we had conflicts and we went through that phase where our husband and wife need to had to get involved and sometimes even our parents from india used to call us non stop resolving our issues <laughs> and uh so as a when we, this was the initial phase even now we if we have some conflicts but we don't have time to fight so we just <laughs> so we just leave a voice note on whatsapp for 10 seconds and he knows i'm frustrated or he has some objections and we are done with that so um yeah and then again growing a team is also a challenge so we we have we are hiring and we keep hiring and whoever whatever agents we are we have we are we have very nice good hard working uh, produce producing agent uh, we have an expectation set but sometimes we do make some hires where they are wrong hires for our team not the right fit they don't want to work like how imran pink and other agents are putting efforts and then we have to have to let them go so these are the challenges Uh, uh having just five uh, active agents and 276 homes is a very big number uh, so we want we make sure that we don't add too many 15 20 agents in our team all t all agents are full time agents and they uh, do good production so uh, yeah that that's what it is tell us about behind the scenes who handles your admin me no you do not you have more they have more family involved by the way so <laughs> So we have divided responsibility. He takes care of, uh, you know, Facebook and command and email blasting. I'm the one who is talking to listing coordinator, admin. We have a lot of people behind working behind the scene. Uh, last year we had a very busy year, but I didn't had a consistent assistant. Um, so it was very challenging. We hired a virtual assistant. She has been a great blessing from last one month. Uh, you know, so sometimes. we have to get flexible uh, but we all have divided responsibility he takes care of lot of things even though he doesn't come every day but he's always there to answer questions to our agents he's always uh, walking with the other agents when it comes to selling new construction we go to the listing presentation together but i come every day to the office to make sure you know uh, the, the everything is running well in the team and then we have a separate transaction team for buyer side and seller side too so we have uh, a transaction coordinator working only on the listing side and then my wife she is handling transactions on the buyer side and then she has hired somebody under her uh, back home so two people just focused on buyers uh, transaction so back home being india that are virtual that's right that's okay so it's a I virtual think, uh, the assistant the virtual assistant is for philippines yeah oh, there is a, yeah she is this is a very famous company i i was because i have challenge i always talk like talking to other uh, top producers and taking ideas so i learned that va has been helping to lot of these yep. top producers so i tried and it's working well yeah okay what's next for you guys selling i mean we're going to double it again <laughs> right <laughs> so uh looking at 2022 it's going to have its own challenges uh, of course you know we are very ambitious in uh hitting you know even higher numbers setting you know higher goals but also being very realistic uh, the market is evolving uh, the market was different in 2021 it's going to be different in 2022 and the challenges that we see this year is going to be uh less inventory uh hard to find listings a lot of competition uh when we talk about new construction the market is better than last year the the new construction industry was kind of in crisis because of lumber shortages labor shortages uh it has improved but it's still not as great uh, as much as i talk to builders uh they are still hitting high volumes and the construction situation is still the same uh november and december was pretty slow but as soon as we entered january and all the builders have sold more homes than they were expecting in january so what my understanding is if we are let's say in second quarter of 2022 it's going to be sellers market okay. that that's my prediction yeah miki what would you add to that what's next and what do you see coming up yeah we are already um, into a very crazy market we started january so uh, 
listing the more listings anybody has they will have a privilege of getting more advantage um and we are uh, we are we are highly in new construction and majority of our buyers are looking for new construction homes since richmond is uh, right now out of lot of our clients budget because first time home buyers they have maxed out at 400000 they still want two story home in under 400000 which is very challenging so we have extended our uh, work and we are visiting many communities towards kt and rosenberg and other areas but we we still want to serve and we are still exploring so we as a team go we have been touring lot of uh, communities two weeks uh, two weeks before we went to kt and explored um, more than 12 communities not more than more than that um, builders so we are we are working towards uh, that it is challenging to find in our main area you know to find homes under 400000 all right i didn't put this one on the question is asking for rebates and commission how do you handle it <laughs> we didn't cover that as part of our challenge no uh, and it is a challenge it is and you guys face it head on by the way there's times that it makes sense and times that it doesn't so right. how would you follow up with that? So we haven't, you know, set a specific ben benchmark. Uh, we take it as an objection on every situation. Uh, we handle those objections by putting in front the value that we bring in each and every transaction, right? And then depending on the situation, and I'm not saying that, you know, we don't give rebates or we don't, you know, discount on our commission. Sometimes we have to, right? But we don't market ourselves. Uh, when we started selling new construction homes, the biggest challenge at that time, and even today, was agents, you know, competing by giving, you know, cash back. So how did we succeed? Not one flyer or not one mark piece of marketing you will see over a period of four or five years since we started selling home, where you will see the BNP team is talking about any sort of, you know, discounting or commission. Never, ever. Even today, no matter how difficult the situation will be, we always talk about value. And once they see value in us, then we are open to that conversation. But we don't market ourselves as discount agent. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll go on record when I ask Chris to this. He goes, because some people, people go, oh, they did all that discounted. And she goes, no, there's a lot of deals that come in that you are earning the 3%. Yes. yes. Yeah. Even yeah. now, if sometimes anybody- Sometimes more than 3%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sometimes more than that. Anybody calling me um, and asking how much commission you will give for listing, or I said, if commission is the motivation, then I'm not the right agent for you. Even if I'll give you 2%, you will find an agent who will work for flat 1,000. Yeah. But when you try to save that 6,000 or 7,000, you will see yourself buying a house $40,000 more because that agent would do nothing and you will just go and looking for homes by yourself from the time when you will find the right home for you, the 40,000, the prices are up and then you will not even get a good service from the builder. So I explained to them, yeah, so I always tell them that I'm not, if you want to work with us and only if you think the value, then we can talk about that. Very good, great answer to it. All right, let's talk about, I didn't set this That's one up true. either. That's okay. That's I'm giving true. them. Okay, you've been- reality, yeah, uh, go ahead. I just want to share like 2019 and 2018 when we were posting all the coming soon and still deal homes, people were checking our Facebook post, asking questions in 2019, they didn't buy, they were working with some agents in the family. They said, okay, we'll see, we'll see. Now these people are calling us and they're willing to pay 150,000, 200,000 more for those homes, but there is nothing. So it's actually, you know, it's a loss. Um, you we, we, Sometimes it's frustrating when people are asking about the cashback or commission discount, but educate them that, you know, um, going that route is going to have, it's not going to help you, you know, give, give me my commission. Let me take my commission and let me work for your best interest. Very good. I like that response. All right. Let's talk about family. You both are uh, a mother and father and you have kids. And the challenge of that, how do you handle it all? It's very stressful, to be honest. Uh, there's no specific day that I, I would say that I take off. Uh, so I kind of work all seven days. But then, you know, depending on how my schedule is, I sometimes, you know, will take half day or a day off and, you know, spend time with my family. Um, when the market was crazy last year and a year before we, when we were selling Third, we were actually doing 30, 40 contracts in a month. I used to leave home at like 9, 9.30 in the morning, come home at 9, 9.30 at night. And when I come home, my kids were already in bed. So it was 
emotional it was challenging but then you know we look at the brighter side of how you know financially you know we have grown and how our lifestyle has changed and it is only you know i'm working because because that's helping my family thank you so my husband is a cell phone store manager in baytown 13 hours in a day 6 days in a week he is not around me uh during the day i live my life as a single mom from last 10 years but my my kids are uh, you know self dependent i have two boys 15 years and 11 years 5 years ago when i started my business one was 6 and one was 11 um so we i have gone through a phase where i i wasn't able to give them enough time and lot of things were compromised but whenever my husband and his days off in the evening we try to balance and we try to cover up the things it there has been a compromising situation but the only thing we don't compromise is their health and education yeah family time there has been lot of months and months we didn't had family time but now since i have achieved and i have achieved what i dreamed for so now we are trying to i am hiring more people who can pick my calls and assistance so i am at a level where i can leverage more things from my plate and then uh, we me and my husband are working on getting lot of things systematic in our lives but uh, the good thing is my boys are really very self dependent right now and they are pretty strong so even that worked on their that that's an advantage okay all right what's the one thing you want to leave us with what's the one thing that you would want the group to hear from you from i'm a new agent just starting i've been in this business for 20 years in the team what's the one thing you would want to leave us with uh one thing that i want to leave is uh telling all the agents whether you're new or whether you've been this, in this business for last 5 years 10 years maybe over a decade uh gary keller keeps talking about technology it's going to be disruptive uh, we have incorporated uh technology in our daily business focus on that because that's going to have a major impact on your business technology okay thank you i would suggest um, to invest in the relationship and continue doing the hard work being a top producer any agent whether it's a new agent or any top producer they never have to think twice to talk to me i have 12 listing right now i have so many agents calling me every day i strongly believe in having a very good rapport with everybody either it's your team member or it's your office or any uh, agent from your brokerage or clients the most importantly even the least clients are important so invest in the relationship be very humble and nice with everyone because you also need the support of other people no matter how big uh, they are business, how big or how small they are in the production so that's very very important um, you, yeah so you i we strongly we both strongly believe that having a good relationship in this business with everybody is very important okay awesome time for one or two questions make it a good one if you ask it who's got one or two questions or I online have, yes go one. ahead uh thank you uh, th thanks for giving us a little bit of uh, education on your success however i'm not showing my face don't worry don't look for my face <laughs> you know who is talking this allow but anyway what can you elaborate on you don't give commission suppose a, a buyer uh, agent comes to your uh, finding your listing and say okay this is your listing then i have a client and tell me about you're not giving commission no 3% nothing or what what, what 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 don't you get commission from the builder on your own Can yeah. you explain that, please? Yeah. So if I'm standing in the open house, if anybody is asking for the commission, I never say that we will give the commission because even though sometimes they say, "Hey, okay, you are getting commission on both the sides," but even on the other side, we are still representing you, and we have to work on your inspection, renegotiation, getting yourself under contract, working with your lender. Still, there is lot of service required. so we never agree for that and we don't even recommend any of our open house any agents in our open houses too and we have sold our listings without giving any cash back because um, they see the value so we never agree that okay great that uh, that's the best way to answer it no you start with value we don't start with price right yes. and if you if, in the absence of value 
price becomes a determining factor and all they care about the price and they don't want to talk about your value, you just move along. And this is a true, this is fact, and I'm 100% sure about this. Even if you agree for the commission, you will never ever get that business. <laughs> because now you agree for 1%, they will find someone with 2%. If you agree for 2%, they will find someone for 2 because now they don't see value in you. Yeah. So That's you will true. never earn that business. So don't agree for commission. Okay, awesome. Any last questions? Anyone going once, going twice. All right, Imran and Pinky, I love, I'm proud to be in business with you. I've like, enjoyed nice watching the success. You've gotten after it. You, and what I hope you heard out of this is they're in alignment with where they're going, right? Their goals doesn't mean it doesn't come without challenges, right? Could you imagine working with your brother or sister the other way around? <laughs> I'd probably get fired from them. But yet they're, they're in communication. They had great examples growing up of being in business with family work. But it takes work and they show up and work every day and they put themselves out there. So thank you so much for sharing and thank great you job. Thank you. We, we really owe our success to you, Varna, Nikki, Nimesh. They all are always there supporting me to grow my team i re we really appreciate even though imran doesn't come but imran knows everything what's going on <laughs> so if i'm talking to nikki or i'm talking to warna and if i'm going for a help if you all are helping me barbara is helping me if i have a question for chad imran get updates for everything our whatsapp have more than 100 voice note every day so we are really very grateful for the support and for the environment and culture we have in this office Awesome. All right. Thank We're you. grateful for you. Thank you guys. Great stuff. All right. Our business partners, come on up. AMCAP, patent title, Reliant, you're back. All right. Go ahead. Take it over. Speaking of value, Pinky and Imran close with patent title. <laughs> and speaking of value, um, one thing that they like, I think I can't speak I think one thing that I can do to add value is if their um, team members have questions, she just says, call Melissa, because I'm able to walk them through, um, you know, every situation, any, anything that comes up, I'm able to answer. So I'm always adding value, reach out and call me. I'll see what I can do to add value to any of you. Um, you brought up voicemails. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. How often do you guys check your voicemails? No, <laughs> and some are shaking their head no. I'll say that because we are having a hard time getting in touch with you guys. And if we don't email, if we email and don't get a response, we call. Well, a lot of times you guys don't answer and then your voicemail is full. So if you could, when you get a chance, um, check your voicemails. Also, what's a good habit to get into is recording a message every morning. Hi, this is Melissa from Patent Title. It today's Monday, blah, blah, blah. I'm doing this, you know, or, or send me a text. Every day, just do a new voicemail and it eliminates having missed voicemails. Something might be important that you're missing that you're not um, getting because I don't, I probably have messages on there from like six months ago. So if you want me, text me. No, I'm just kidding. Fun fact, real quick, Dale. And then you're up next. So did you know that Alexander um, Graham Bell did, not, he's credited for inventing the telephone, but he did actually not invent the telephone. There was someone before him, but Alexander Bell was the first one to get the patent on it. So there you go. All right. Okay, great. <laughs> hello, hello. Okay, speaking of value, I want you to see me as, as your extended hand helping you, okay? No matter your customer sign up for me or not, if they sign up for me, you make a referral fee, I make money, customer getting a good deal, that's good. Even though sometimes they don't sign up for me, I still, even though they give me some offer from before or internet or something like that, I still check for them and see, make sure it's, they don't fall in the bread hand, okay? Because something on the internet is really tricky. So I make sure they get the good deal and then I tell them to go for the good deal. Then at least I, they will tell me, thanks for the honesty, okay? The last week I have two customers, they've been searching on the internet for a long time. They don't know how to read it. So louder, one, louder. Speak louder. one girl is say, oh, uh, 
since your plan is easier, I just sign up for you. The other one been shopping a long, long, a lot and then still cannot make the decision. It's confusing for her. So I gave her the plan. She still want to shop around. Eventually, I pull up all the usage from the house and convince her that good plan from the internet is actually not a good plan for her because some good plan, it fall in certain range is good for you, but most of the range is not good. So I have data to show them why it's not good. So yeah, because when you help the customer get the low way in the beginning, you're helping them for the whole life. Not only this year, okay? <laughs> That's how I help your customer, okay? All right, great, thank you. Good morning, everyone. So one thing to kind of talk about what Melissa talk, said about voicemails. How many of you have voicemails set up that say, hey, this is Kasim, leave a message? How come? Are you a realtor? Do you want people to know what you do for a living? Do you want them to know who you are and the reason you're calling potentially? Okay. It's just a real quick way. I mean, you all are out there. You, you do anything and everything you can to support your business. And obviously to not be a secret agent, you want to let everyone know I'm a realtor. I'm with Keller Williams Realty and this is my name. If you're leaving voicemail messages, it's the same, the same thing in your message. Leave a time and a date and who I am and the purpose of my call. If you've got people that you're cold calling and again, you don't know, we are subject to constant phone calls from spammers. Another great way too, though, is to text your message and then you can follow up. Everybody reads a text message. How many has read a text message in here today in this meeting? We read a text message, we see a number, and then in that text message, you say, I'm going to be contacting you. We do that as lenders constantly because we get a lot of phone calls that everybody wants to screen. People keep their old phone numbers. They've got a number from Washington, D.C. or from Washington State constantly. When they don't recognize an area code, they assume it's a spammer and it gets pushed off. So again, just some little tips to do that. Um, biggest thing that we do as lenders is try to, we don't try, but we work with clients to gather documents so we can verify their information. Does everyone know all the documentation required for a mortgage loan? No. It's right on the back of most loan officers' business cards. Get a business card. Know what you're going to be required for as, an, as a buyer to present for financing. Right now in this market, if you're throwing loans out there or su submitting offers with 45-day closes, you're probably not going to be even uh, have your, your buyers even consider. Oh, thank you, Nimesh. Even consider. <laughs> look, Time is out. Look at that. So again, do whatever you can to get your clients to us. Self-employed buyers have to provide tax returns and profit and loss statements. So be prepared for that. But thank you all. We're here for you. All right. Thank you, Neil. All right. Good stuff. All right. And on to our uh, lunch sponsor, Home Warranty. Go ahead. Speak up. You got a big group online. So speak into that. Camera awesome. Right Hello, everyone online. I have a clicker. Let's see. Adelina Haskin with Armadillo Home Warranty. So I do want everyone to know, like he said, on my voicemail, you're going to hear it. <laughs> um, we are marketing as a new age of home warranty. We are making things very simple. So I work for the, finally work for the home warranty company. I've been in the industry three years, started in title, been in home warranty the last two years. And now with a company where you don't have to hire an attorney to get things covered. Okay. We're actually here because we care. We've simplified the coverage and there's a lot in the armadillo difference. So one of the things here, hassle-free home ownership, after the first year, after we've taken them through escrow, they actually can customize. So imagine home warranty a la carte. Do you want one year of coverage, two or three? Would you like to pay that monthly or all up front? Or how about you get to choose your deductible? Wouldn't that be nice? Uh, especially for those of us who are home ownership. Also the technology, the technology is also there, high tech compatible with any mobile device. Why is that important? Because in other companies, I was answering the phone at nine o'clock at night because the websites aren't user friendly. 
So the high technology, we want them to be able to click quick claim without even having to log into their account and stop that plumbing leak or get the AC working in the middle of the summer, right? Now I have this up as far as pricing that you can keep in mind that $750 plan is a great price, full coverage, but honestly, this is the most important piece of information to take down. And that was my phone number in the very beginning. That 910, North Carolina area code, 916-1645. Why? I would love to be your go-to home warranty expert. All things home warranty. If there's a question, they need education in English or in Espanol, I'm here to help you, right? Um, if they're not understanding the difference or the importance and you're like, this, is, this limits my liability. I know this is good for my client. They're not getting it. Let me see if Adelina can talk to them. Throw my name in the hat, please. And I'll take as much time as I need to with them. No, no question is silly. The biggest difference though, um, besides we said the high technology customization after at renewal, being able to contact me as your go-to for all over, all over Houston, being able to choose your own technician when ours can't get out to your house is we've removed 80% of the fine print. So you guys got a handout today. Sorry, it's not in the slideshow. I'll, I'll hand it to leadership so that it can be emailed out to you. 80% of exclusions has been removed. So if you guys see those brochures, there's six to 25 pages of what we will cover, what we won't cover. We covered this part of the AC, but we don't cover the evaporator coil or the compressor. Armadillo says, if we cover the AC, we cover the AC. Simple, right? That's awesome. If we cover the water heater, we're covering the water heater up to the limit. So instead of 25 pages of exclusions, we're down to three pages, three pages. We're doing what we say we do. So again, definitely reach out to me. Let me be a go-to. Online, if you guys can type in the chat, who's working with a home, um, a buyer right now that will need a home warranty? And in the room, if you guys could just show your hands, you're gonna be needing to order a home warranty soon. We got one. No, we got more now. Two. Exactly with the buyer. <laughs> okay. If I not find awesome. Them, awesome. Awesome. You're working yes. with the buyer. You're going yeah. to find them a home. I trust you. Please text me if you're on the Zoom, your full name and your email, and I'll send you some quotes. And in the room, I'm going to grab your card so I can get quotes to you so that you're already ahead of the game when you get out of option period is actually the best time to order home warranty. Not at the closing table, but I got your back if that happens. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Good stuff. Thank you so much for lunch as well. And she'll be around. Yeah. It might take you 15 offers to get your buyer under contract, but you will get them under contract. All right. Thank you guys so much for being here. I trust that was a lot of value and sharing with that. I hope you took some great notes. Stay for lunch and we'll see you next week. Woo!